everybody, welcome back to the Quick Take and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Now, in the past, I have emphasized the belief that it's in the midfield in which games are won and lost. It's the heart of each game. Who controls the midfield, controls possession, pace, passing openings, attack and defence. With the departure of N'Golo Kante to Al Etihad and as Mateo Kovacic agrees personal terms with Manchester City, this leaves Chelsea's midfield, Chelsea's core, in dire need of investment. No, smart investment. With the current list of outgoings, Chelsea's midfield options for the 23-24 season currently stand as the Argentinian Enzo Fernandez, Carney Chukameka and Conor Gallagher, although Gallagher's future is somewhat up in the air. Chelsea need to sell in order to buy and they see Gallagher as a gold mine of sorts. However, the Chelsea Academy graduate is less than keen to lead the London club. If he were to leave, that leaves just Enzo and Carney realistically. And yes, I'm aware Andre Santos and Cesar Casade exist and both will be assessed during the preseason before their futures are determined. Although I do see both being sent on loan for a season in order to achieve more playing time and therefore develop healthily. So the question remains, what do Chelsea really need in the midfield this summer? Well, it's quite simple, an out and out number six. A defensive midfielder ready to perform the dirty work in the midfield pivot with Enzo Fernandez to allow the Argentinian to progress into more dangerous areas of the field where he can cause the most damage. In my opinion, one of the best options that was on the market was Manuel Ugarte. Those of you who have watched my videos before know just how much I admire Manuel Ugarte as a player and understand the role he would have played in the midfield. At one point, it seemed Ugarte to Chelsea was a done deal, but alas, football is football and PSG came out of nowhere and stole him from beneath our noses. So who does that leave? Well, let's find out. Firstly, I will be taking a look at Joshua Kimmich. The German midfielder is 28 years old and has spent nearly a decade playing at Bayern Munich at the highest level of football, winning a Champions League and countless league and cup titles. Bayern predominantly play a 4-2-3-1, a system he will be walking into with Pochettino favouring the formation. His role at Bayern is really to connect the defence to the midfield and the attack, allowing his pivot counterpart to move up the field to more dangerous areas, exactly what we're looking for with Enzo Fernandez seemingly being smothered in that defensive midfielder role. He is incredibly comfortable on the ball, dealing with press from the opposition with no issue. He averages over 86 attempted passes per 90, along with 9.87 progressive passes per game, meaning he doesn't just pass it to the fullbacks or back to the keeper, he instead looks to get the attack moving. Bayern are a side that usually dominate possession, and so Kimmich's defensive stats may not be as impressive as a Declan Rice, for example. That's simply down to the fact that Declan Rice is forced into a defensive action on a more regular basis than Joshua Kimmich. Although 1.52 interceptions per 90 is still pretty good. What really makes Kimmich stand out amongst the rest is his true qualities. Kimmich possesses an incredible passing range, making long passes over the top to attacking players, wiping out any efforts from the opponent's defence. According to Football Insider, Bayern Munich are willing to accept a £52 million bid for the German six. In my opinion, this would be a fantastic piece of business. He's in the prime of his career. He knows the 4-2-3-1 like the back of his hand. His experience is second to none and he's exactly what we need. Also, this season Kimmich ranked third in the Bundesliga for distance covered, averaging 12.3 kilometers per game. Meaning not only is he well versed in our requirements, he will find Pochettino's famous installation of pace and stamina to be no issue at all. Next up is Marcelo Brozovic of Inter Milan. Now, I know what you're thinking, not Inter Milan, not again. Listen, Brozovic has actually become quite a decent midfielder in recent years and is currently at the peak of his powers. He currently plays as a central midfielder in a 3-5-2 Inter Milan side, performing a lot of the dirty work. He certainly wouldn't be a terrible option and I believe the upcoming Champions League final against Manchester City will be the perfect audition for Brozovic to stake his claim in football and make his name one to be remembered. Manchester City are likely to dominate possession, so it'll be a good showing to see how he goes about winning back set possession on the grandest stage of them all. Brozovic, from what I've seen, is similar to Kimmich in the fact he's very comfortable under pressure. His naturally taller frame helps the Croatian outmuscle a lot of his opponents, making him somewhat suited to the highly physical nature of the Premier League. It must also be mentioned Brozovic owns a rather impressive knack for winning interceptions and winning them cleanly, retaining possession and beginning the turnover. Although he may not be many people's first choice, 
I do believe respect should be placed on his name. Inter Milan are reportedly asking for around £34 million for the Croatian, meaning more funds will be available for the striker and the goalkeeper situation. Next up is Fulham's João Polinha. Polinha joined the Whites from Sporting Lisbon for a £17 million fee back in the summer of 2022 and has impressed many since then. The Portuguese defensive midfielder ranks in the 99th percentile for tackles per 90 at 4.26 a game, also ranking highly in aerial duels won and clearances made per game, making him a defensive rock. Palinja is similar to Brozovic in terms of his natural physical advantages, which again has helped him massively adapt to the Premier League. From what I've seen of him, he is entirely fearless. He will throw his entire body into harm's way if he feels it will result in him winning the ball back for his team. It can be argued this is a trait you cannot put a price on. He is relentless and brilliant. He does have a few shortcomings however, in terms of passing, he is rather tame with his highest percentile ranking being 52nd in pass completion at around 82.5%. It would be Enzo Fernandez that would inherit the majority of the chance creation responsibilities with a partner like João Polinha. Another potential drawback would be his price, as he's only one year into his five year deal with Fulham and as far as I'm aware, they do not need to sell, it would take quite a large sum to pry the Portuguese man from Fulham. Football Insider revealed Fulham are demanding £60 million for the 27-year-old number 6, quite a sum considering Ugarte went for £52 million and is arguably a far better player. It really does rob salt into the open wound. There have been rumours of a release clause, although Fabrizio Romano has denied these claims. Next on the list is the Ecuadorian destroyer Moises Caicedo. This season, one of the standout players in a fantastic Brighton side has been Moises Caicedo, partnered in the midfield by either Alexis McAllister, who is now signed for Liverpool, Pascal Gross, or even Billy Gilmore at times. Signed back in 2021 for just 5 million euros, the Ecuadorian has flourished into one of the best midfielders in the Premier League. There, I said it. When you look at his stats, he is clearly impactful wherever he plays because at some points this season, he has been deployed as a fullback. He ranks in the 85th and 94th percentile for passes attempted and passes completed, whilst in a more defensive sense, he sits in the 87th and 89th ranking for tackles and interceptions at 2.87 and 1.61 per game. In my honest opinion, I think he would be a fantastic replacement for the great N'Golo Kante. At just 21 years old, he plays like a player in his prime. He is a true talent. It has been reported it will take a bid well over £70 million to pry the prized man away from Brighton. If I had to guess, I believe a deal will cost around £85 million. Brighton are reportedly looking to add Levy Colwell to a potential deal, which could become a sticking point as Chelsea's unwavering stance regarding Colwell's future is that he remains at Chelsea no matter what. This standing block, this barrier may be too much of an impasse for a deal to be struck, although reports do suggest Chelsea are currently leading the race to sign the Brighton midfielder. Next up is a bit of a wild card. It's Declan Rice. There's not much I can say that hasn't already been said about the English international. He is clearly one of the best defensive midfielders in the world. What he's accomplished at West Ham is nothing short of incredible. Captaining a side to a European trophy at 24 years old is just brilliant. Off the field, he is a true captain as well and certainly has the respect of former Chelsea captain and one of my favourite all-time players, John Terry. When you look at his stats, you could walk away believing he is a pretty good ball-winning progressive defensive midfielder. Declan Rice sits in the 95th percentile for interceptions per game and ranks in the 80th and 85th percentile for progressive passes and carries, meaning he is brilliant at breaking up attacks from the opposing team before springing into action and starting the attack. I do believe he would complement Enzo Fernandez, although Rice does like to get forward at times, he is still predominantly a defensive midfielder. Although Arsenal are leading the race to sign Declan Rice, it wouldn't be the first time Chelsea stole a player from under the Gunners' noses. Graham Bailey revealed via Loaded Mag and UFC that he believes Chelsea are the most likely side to meet West Ham's valuation for Declan Rice, giving them an edge when it comes to the transfer. Declan Rice is of course a Chelsea fan. I understand that doesn't mean much nowadays, but if you had the option of joining the club you grew up and still are a fan of, or play for a direct rival, surely you have to follow your heart, even if you do miss one year of Champions League football. It has been reported West Ham are demanding a £110 million fee for their captain, an astronomical fee for an astronomical player. A fee I don't see Arsenal reaching anytime soon. Another name that has been mentioned in the Chelsea conversation is Romeo Lavia. I've actually discussed Lavia on the channel before, and so here's a little clip of me going over his playstyle and what he'd bring to Chelsea. Oh. 
The first player I would be looking at is Romeo Lavia. The 19-year-old Belgian midfielder joined the Saints from the Manchester City Academy for a little over £10 million, an absolute steal in hindsight. Since joining the Saints, Lavia has impressed many Premier League clubs, making 25 league appearances, putting himself at the top of Chelsea summer midfield wishlist. But why? Lavia is one of the few players who I believe their underlying metrics aren't a fair representation of their true ability. Although his highest percentile ranking is blocking sitting in the 90th percentile, Lavia doesn't really stand out on paper in any other stat. For both interceptions and tackles, he ranks on the 71st percentile, although he does also rank highly in pass completions and successful take-ons. What this tells us without even watching him play is he's a progressive ball-carrying defensive midfielder, a little bit like Mateo Kovacic if Mateo Kovacic was 6 feet tall and one of the most promising young DMs in the league. However, football isn't all about stats and numbers, and I truly believe in the eye test, I really do. From what I've witnessed, Lavia is incredibly confident on the ball, quick-feated and able to shift his body weight with ease, allowing him to drift past opponents and glide through opposition press like a hot knife through butter. His passing range is certainly impressive, the Belgium is not afraid to play longer passes with his weaker foot, not with 100% accuracy every time, but enough to provoke the notion that he is not set on one foot and is determined to utilise both feet when possible. With every pro there must be cons. Yes, Lavia is an exciting prospect, but he is also prone to mistakes. This can be a result of inexperience. Once again, he is only 19 years old, but for a side that desperately needs some form of solidarity and experience in the defensive midfielder position, it can be argued Lavia may not be best suited for this role alongside Enzo. At Southampton, Lavia plays alongside James Ward Prowse in a double pivot. He is certainly the deepest lying midfielder for the Saints, but that doesn't make him the most defensively set player. He isn't a destroyer like Casemiro. I'm not saying he can't become that kind of a player, but it's not what he is right now. To get the best out of Enzo, Chelsea need a defensive rock to allow the Argentinian to drift into areas, open passing lanes, and split defences in half. At number three, it's Romeo Lavia. This one surprised me. I have admired Lavia for a while now, although I do believe I may have allowed myself to get caught up in the hype. Yes, the signs are there that he can turn into an unbelievable defensive midfielder, but he is also young, a bit raw and inexperienced. Chelsea have a lot of that at the moment. What is needed is a bit more security, a guarantee that the person walking into the number 6 position and taking on that responsibility can handle it at the highest level. I just don't think Lavia is there yet. As you have heard, I do believe Lavia isn't really exactly what we need in the midfield. Although I believe Lavia to be an exceptional player, I think it would be wise to pursue a Joshua Kimmich as well, someone who's a lot more established and proven. As I was putting this video together, it was reported by Felix Johnson and Bobby Vincent that Chelsea have now officially opened talks to sign Romeo Lavia from Southampton. Although the Saints have just been relegated, they're still demanding a fee of £50 million, with £10 million going to Lavia's home club, Manchester City. One honourable mention I'd like to make is Federico Redondo, the Argentinian prospect who was recently followed on Instagram by Chelsea's co-director of recruitment and talent, Joe Shields. Redondo has been compared to Sergio Bisquets as his calm, on-the-ball nature and natural ball-winning ability has created many admirers. It would certainly fit into Chelsea's mould or buy prospects young and reap the rewards in a few years' time. Also, there will be no language barrier between himself and Enzo, so another plus side to a potential move. Although the number 6 position is the priority, Chelsea have also added their name to the hat to sign Celta Vigo's Gabriel Vega, who has 11 goals and 4 assists in 39 appearances this season. Vega plays as a midfielder, although it can be argued he occupies a space similarly to Kai Havertz. If I had to guess, he is being looked into as a potential backup for Christopher Nkunku, which is always wise as you never know when a player you depend upon massively could pick up an injury. His metrics suggest he is the definition of a goal-scoring midfielder as the Spanish player ranks in the 99th percentile for non-penalty goals compared to other midfielders. He averages 2.43 shots a game along with 2.67 progressive carries per 90 and 1.53 successful take-ons. His biggest weakness lies in his passing. Gabriel Vega averages a measly 29.11 passes attempted per 90 ranking him in the third percentile. Vega clearly likes the ball and is confident in his abilities to make something happen himself. This could become frustrating for other teammates and supporters if this somewhat selfish nature fails to end in end product. And of course, a moment of silence for Arsene Zakarian. Let me know down in the comment section who your preferred choice is for the midfield. Is it someone I've not mentioned? I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, make sure you've liked the video. It helps spread the video to more people like yourself and also helps me out. 
We're closing in on 10,000 subscribers, which I hope to hit before the end of June. If you haven't already, why not subscribe to The Quick Take and join us in this incredible journey together? It's just the beginning. I've been The Quick Take and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.